Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This week on Ice Pilots NWT. Minimums, minimums. Buffalo's newest Electra is hammered by brutal winds up the valley. What's this forecast? We just played all of them. And a rookie crew faces the worst ice storm in years. There's like half an inch of ice on everything. As one rampy fights to make it at Buffalo. There's so much to do. <laughs> you don't pull your weight here, you're not gonna last. You're gonna freeze up the f-ing engine again. Couldn't care less. Crank it over. Boy. It's 30 below in Yellowknife. It's clear now, but a severe weather system is moving in, and the Buffalo crew wants to fly the Mackenzie Valley run before it hits. We're just checking out the weather for today up the valley. We're going up to Norwell, Toledo, and Delaney. Yeah, gusting up to 20 knots, they're saying uh, around noon. This winter, A.J. DeCoast has been promoted to chief pilot. He replaced Justin Simley when Justin left Buffalo to start his own small airline. I became chief pilot. It's been more office work than I had before. And uh, I enjoy it, but I also enjoy it, like the chance to get out here and work with the guys, fly the Lusha. Mechanic Corey Dodd is working toward a promotion to flight engineer. That's good. I can get up there. I've always wanted to be an actual flight engineer. Now I have the opportunity to do it. The flight engineer monitors all in-flight systems. There's a lot more systems than I'm used to, like on the 215 or the C-46, so. But it's good, it's fun. This is the first time they'll be flying the Lockheed L-188 Electra that Joe acquired last year in England. Well, we're just gonna go up the valley here. So the big change in Buffalo is, is bringing in these Lockheed Electras. We got two of them set up as freighters, and we have two coming on this spring as air tankers, the forest fires. Run, run! The final piece of freight. They, they can never, eh? they, they can't wait. The Electras were built in the late 1950s. Their massive cargo capacity and four turboprop engines make them ideal for long distances and short Arctic runways. Yeah, I'm 28. And you know, I fire about 41210 is ready to go to it. With the incoming storm breathing down their necks, they'll need all the power they can get. Buffalo 1210 tower, contact section 135 when you're for takeoff runway 2 and have a good flight. Okay, ready left. Ready, ready. All right. Both ramps, so far, so far. Fixing on high wheel. 80, check. 81. Rotate. The valley run should take under six hours. Just enough time to outrun the coming storm. Oh, there eight. You're up. Continue when you're heading to 5,000 and clear direct to Norman Wells. That's a magnetic for the normal airport. That's sure. But up ahead at their first stop, Norman Wells, the storm is moving in much faster than predicted. Buffalo 1210, Roger. That's significant weather we're calling. Visibility 3 miles, wind 270 at 14, gusting 25. 25 knots, let's say we've got a lot more than that on the nose, hey? Yeah, it moves around once we get closer to the walls. For any plane, gusting winds can cripple airspeed, slamming a plane off course or into the ground. Buffalo 1210, clear Norman Wells Airport for an approach. Okay, on the way in. We have strong headwind, 160, 115 over the ground. Okay. If you have really gusty conditions, you have to make lots of power changes to keep yourself on speed and on profile. At uh, 1,200 horsepower, gear down, landing check to fly. 
1500. Flight engineer Luby Lobos constantly adjusts engine speed to compensate for the gusting wind. Set 1200. Perfect. And the runway they draw. Roger. Check intentional for the strong headwind. And back to a thousand. One thousand. Set eight hundred. Eight hundred down to five hundred, please. Pops up afters. And normal's ready. Buffalo one two one zero is down there. Close the flight, please. Buffalo one two one zero, Roger. Flight plan is closed. Success, but the storm is closing in fast, and getting out of here could get ugly. All right, we're off to the hospital. In Hay River, the newest member of the Buffalo crew is CJ Assaf from Ottawa, Ontario. I came out to Buffalo, definitely to be a pilot. You know, you gotta pay your dues. So this is a good stepping stone. Definitely a good uh, first job. But it's hard work. Sometimes you don't get a lunch. So it can be stressful, definitely, at times. All right, we're at the hospital here. He's starting where most rampies start, working the courier route for Buffalo Express. Uh, hold on. Oh my god. But his patience is already wearing thin. I didn't get into this to drive a van around here ever. Back at the office, he appeals to manager Kathy McBrien. Driving gets boring like over time. Mm -hmm. I'd die for an hour in, the, in my logbook. It all happens. I did courier, it was my job. As soon as I got a driver's license, when I was 16, I did courier. Dude, I've done courier for four, like four years. It's like my favorite job. My deliveries never ended until about 7.30 at night. Maybe that's why we're so crusty when people complain about courier. We're like, yeah, we all did it. CJ heard about Buffalo on TV. And there's the Electra. Yeah, I've watched most of the seasons. Thought it was pretty cool. Can't say that's not a bit of the reason why I want to be here, right? But when you're actually here in reality, it's a lot harder. Back home in Ottawa, he isn't used to roughing it. Yeah, I do come from a well-off family. My father is a commercial and residential real estate developer back home. That is not good. <laughs> I heard uh, some people have said I've whined a bit, and maybe I have. I mean, come on, it's minus 45. Uh, you know, I've complained a little bit for sure, but I still get my work done. On the ground in Norman Wells. Just uh, really windy, so the winds are down to stall a little bit. But strong, strong winds. The crew rushes to unload so they can get back in the air before the fast moving storm traps them here. Hey! Okay. Hey, I don't mind cold, but I hate the wind. The wind sucks. It makes everything more difficult. I think we're basically ready to go, so. For the next leg, Corey will get his first chance to sit in the engineer's seat. We unloaded our cargo, fired up, ready to leave. Number one's clear. Buffalo 1210 lock, we're up between them. But even before leaving the ground, Buffalo 1210, roger, and there may be delays. They hit a wall. OK, we checked that uh, Buffalo 1210. When we got the clearance from the tower to leave, there was two inbound airplanes. One was 10 minutes back, and one was 20 minutes back. Visibility is dropping rapidly, and the tower gives landing priority to the inbound planes. I should have started up, but he told me that there was no airplanes coming in. That's why, you know? They're there. They will not let us sneak out. No, not a chance. That other guy's going to do his approach. That's going to take this guy a while to do his approach. I'm almost thinking we should shut down because it's going to be at least 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I think you're probably right. 
We can't afford to sit there and run these engines waiting half an hour for airplanes to come in. So if we sat here idling for 15 minutes, we're basically going to burn about, I don't know, 800 pounds of fuel or more? Enough, enough fuel to heat your home for probably two months in the night. Yeah, okay. at least, yeah. Now, instead of outrunning the storm, they're stuck on the ground watching it get worse. What I do is put all the envelopes in that basket so it won't all over the place. In Hay River, Rampy Prefkar Moni is trying to train new recruit CJ on the courier run. Personal. I'm just teaching him how to do the race, how to organize the envelopes, and how to do, organize the packages. Yeah, looks like we're organized here for the office. OK, OK, hold on. This is hold for pickup. Where does it say that? She always comes down and pick it up here. Doesn't say that, so it's not my fault. How do you find out which one is which? Well, obviously, I'm working on this. No. I'm trying to teach him how to do the deliveries, how to sort out the packages and everything. He was not listening to me. Like being a pilot, you have to be a good listener. Low fuel. Oh. Rough car, I guess Tanner didn't fill it. It's not my van. Mine's, mine's full. Oh, my head going to bust. He is whining and complaining about everything and blaming other people. They're only halfway through the route, but Prefkar's had enough. I can't handle that guy. He's yelling at me and he's swearing at me. I, I can't do it. I don't know. He, he can do by fear out of himself. Yeah, you can go and do your deliveries. I'm not doing it. Yeah, OK. OK? You know what are the routes? Power Surge Hospital, and whatever you want to do, personals, do it. Trying to teach him, and he is not listening. He said he can do by himself. So it's like, OK, go ahead and do by yourself then. So, yeah. Where'd you get this bucket from, outside? Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't feel like standing here until tomorrow waiting for this thing to pour. The freezing weather is not making life flow any faster for Buffalo pilot Graham Ferguson. It's barely a liquid. Have you not got any more? Yeah, I got more. Daytime highs have been hovering at minus 30, and oil isn't the only thing that's freezing. Until you go without water, you have no idea how much, how, how much you get used to it and how much of a necessity it really is. Last week, the pipes under his house froze. He's been trying to get them fixed and get his water back on for five days now. A little luck. Uh, hopefully, I'll get it sorted out today. They dug down a hole in my driveway, and the city guys are working on it. So is that pretty much new line now, right from the, the main all the way to the? Right from the main to the house. No, it definitely didn't look too good. I think it's going to be expensive. Under the house, a plumber's trying to see what he can salvage. I am making out. They got to reconnect there, so I'll have to strip back the insulation, see if I can adapt to it, or if the copper's too swollen. Yeah. I love north. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hachi. Bad dog. Dog got into the garbage. He broke out of his cage and got into the garbage, I should say. I should have named him Houdini instead of Hachi. Hachi, you've been bad. Hachi, Hachi, go to your cage. He's a little escape artist. He gets out of that kennel no matter what we do. We'll face it against a wall or a couch, and he'll somehow get his butt out of that kennel. You got to get a lock. Still no water. I'm sure I'll have water by the end of the day, I hope. <sighs> Life in the north. Pesky pets and no water aren't Graham's only problems. My girlfriend's actually been uh, crashing at Mikey's place. They put her up for until I could get this water sorted out. She's got three kids. She doesn't like not having water. It's so freaking cold up here. In Norman Wells, the crew wants to take off in time to beat the worst of an incoming storm but they've got to wait until two inbound flights can land safely. What 
first there is down. Look at him blow. Look at those guys <laughs> trying to get air. <laughs> After 45 minutes, it's their turn. Search canceled if not airborne before 1936. Time now, 1932. But the tower only gives them a four minute window to get in the air. Hey, ATC clears now for 1210 to the fleet airport. Uh, no one's direct. Climb it to 7000. Okay, ready to lock? 38, 30 here. Off the ramps. Okay, lights are out. Okay, set power. Set power. 80, set. Be on. Rotate. B2, positive range drop. You can put the engine and anti icing on, anyways. Corey is getting his first chance to test his skills as flight engineer. The pilots basically fly the airplane, and the flight engineer manages and operates all the systems on the airplane. This work power is good for you right now, or? Yeah, it's a 1500. Please confirm. Toledo is their next stop, a tricky place to land, even on a good day. Toledo's runway is one of the shorter runways that we're actually allowed to go into with the Electra, so there's not a great deal of room for error. Then there's Bear Rock, a 3,500-foot wind barrier. The wind wants to come over top of the mountain and get a downdraft on the other side of the mountain, which is our landing path going into the runway. OK, we're just three miles from Toledo. We're over Bear Rock here now. Pleasure. Right so when you're on approach, you are getting tossed around. You're getting downdrafts and wind shear and stuff that's just not fun to be in. Add to all that a freak windstorm. We checked the weather in Toledo before we left, and it seemed pretty reasonable. But when we actually started our approach, there were 40-something knots gusting in the high 40s to low 50. 40-knot wind is, is like an 80-kilometer-an-hour wind. It's crazy winds. It's like tornado wind. About the 1,500 horsepower Okay. 1,500. Back to 1,200 again. Corey needs to constantly adjust the speeds of the four engines as their plane is buffeted by wind. Oh. Did your airspeed just take a big shot there? Yeah, I did. My airspeed just jumped like 30 knots. 1,500 there. Okay, track the turbulence or some thing, eh? Oh. Minimums. Must be turbulence or something. My airspeed just jumped like 30 knots. Yeah, let's go back to 1,000 horse. So that was check. Corey Dodd's first landing as a flight engineer is turning into a rocky ride. PJ wants 1,000 horse. We give him a thousand horse. He wants five hundred. Pull back to five hundred. Fifteen hundred. Okay. Right, thanks. But thirty. Back to twelve hundred again. Twelve hundred. Eight hundred. Okay. Leave it there. Four right. lights. Okay. It's okay. AJ's learned to earn his money today. Yeah, you oh, guys too. Good job there, you guys. Both of you. Oh, shoot. 20. What's the door limit on this thing? 35? Uh, I just think it's 40. 40. On the ground, the wind is gusting at 48 knots or 85 kilometers an hour. Yeah, we better loop you. Bring it back down. Anything over 40 knots could rip the cargo door off. Personally, myself, that's the first time I've ever had to wait for the winds to die down to open a cargo door. So we opened the, the little door. We gotta let that wind die down before we open our door. We'll break our door off if we open it. Whenever the wind dies down, I'll open pretty soon. OK, thanks. Corey gets tired of waiting. I'm going to escape rope it. Monday, yeah. Why don't just toss a rope out and jump out? I mean, we used to do it in 46 all the time, just jump out the door and, like, you're jumping out of your treehouse as a kid. This thing's attached. What? A turtle 
opening for this thing is 40 knots, so we can't open it anything above 40 knots or, you know, could damage the airframe door, so we gotta wait now. Hopefully it'll die down in the next half hour, hour. I'm just gonna go in and check the weather. It wasn't even forecast either. It was 10 knots, no wind. He wants to get a more accurate wind speed reading. In the terminal there, in the car station, they have two gauges, one that reads the wind direction and one reads the wind speed. Well, <laughs> the door was locked. But luckily enough, the instrument that we needed to read was right there, so. Earlier when we first landed, it was gusting 48. It seems like it's kind of calmed down a little. Yeah, it's like 20 gusting 30, 35. It's calmed down to 35 knots now. <laughs> Gusts 30, 35, 39, but it hasn't hit 40 to 10. Do you want to go ahead and do it? Or? They decide to chance opening the cargo door. Crazy windy here. It wasn't the forecast to be this way at all when we left Northern Wells, it wasn't. And then when we came in, the wind really picked up. All you kids that are in school, your parents say stay in school and do good grades. Stay in school and do good grades. We'll end up like this. But the storm is moving in fast. AJ decides to cancel their next stop and head home. Okay, Neil right ball left, horizon steady, VSI zero, ADF's track, DG increasing. There's going to be wind shear on departure, and we're going to be turning into a tailwind. Okay. So don't let it slow down too much, Pink. Okay. You're ready on the left. Ready on the right. Ready right here. Cut off ramps. Okay, let's throw. In Hay River, Prefkar has washed his hands of CJ the new rampy he's been training. What happened to you? Oh, he's not listening to me. He started to swear at me. I can't do that with him anymore. Prefkar gets a lift from two of his fellow rampies. Like, I've never seen a guy like CJ. Like, like, seriously, I don't know what his freaking deal is. He has the easiest rampy job. I don't know, I think he sleeps all day because he didn't even deliver the bank bags till 1 o'clock. <laughs> Yeah. The rampies at Buffalo are like a wolf pack. The pack does sort itself out. It does. I'll try the Buffalo burger. Would you like it more cheese and bacon? Uh, sure. No, no bacon. No bacon? Did you print out his business cards yet? <laughs> <laughs> My name's CJ. Head rampy. Have you ever have a damn plane? I need wing tent. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo, CJ speaking. I don't know. Let me see. Hold on, Kenny. Meanwhile, CJ is struggling as a lone wolf. No, don't ask me. I didn't sort it today because I was really busy. I had the, doing the, the plane, so I know everyone's on me, and Kenny keeps warning me and making sure I'm doing my roots good and that. But uh, you know, I haven't stopped. Yeah, if I knew there was a, a few people here who didn't think I'd make it. Definitely make me stronger, I think. You know, you want to prove to them and show everyone you can, you can stick it out. In Yellowknife, a burst water pipe has left pilot Graham Ferguson homeless. Because I got no water at my place, so uh, you can't shower, you can't go to the washroom, you can't really do anything. So it's not really the place to be having a uh, girlfriend and three children there, so. Tonight, he's had to ask his boss to put up his girlfriend and her three kids for the fourth night in a row. I'm going to uh, Mikey's to visit uh, Ingrid and the kids. Mikey's making dinner. At Mikey's house, the Buffalo Bachelor is trying his best to play Mr. Mom. You guys like your, you like your beef rare? No? Don't look. Buffalo's hot sauce. Not too much, though, for the kitties. I don't want to impose on Mikey at all with uh, anger to the kids, so if we can avoid it, we'll try and get the water going back on at my place as quick as we can, get everyone home where they belong. 
It's kind of going in there. <laughs> the co-pilot arrives just in time. Yeah, I don't think I f***ed up the past it. Do you have, like, bigger <laughs> pots? Oh, it's that pie's big. There you go. That's perfect for the sauce. A massive pot on a little tiny element. We're using a microwave oven. What? Use I wouldn't I wouldn't use that in a microwave oven. No, not not for use in microwave oven. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, Audrey. Are okay, you cleaning up the mess? Good boy. It's so crunchy. <laughs> like, how long is it going to be till it's ready? Well, KFC, the guy's gonna be here in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Boy, I think we're pretty much good to go here. You need some water. How is it? Good. That's good. It looks pretty good. I must say, you did a good job. Oh, yeah. You got potential there. You. Really? Oh, yeah. The next morning in Hay River, CJ is supposed to be helping the other Rampies unload the freighter. Oh, uh, CJ's not here, because a month ago he hurt himself. And I guess it's flaring up. <laughs> I heard some good news. CJ's not here because he's a baby. There's reasons every day for everyone to not want to be here. But we show up. Back at the Rampy house, CJ is nursing his injury. Uh, I'm doing OK. Um, I fell off the plane a little while back, early this morning. It wasn't a big load at all, maybe 1,000 pounds for us in Hay River, so I thought it would be a good time to, to phone the office and let them know, uh, I listen, i got to get this checked out. Just, uh, I guess a month ago, he bumped his hip or something, and it, he got a bruise. I guess he's never had a bruise before. And it's a little scary when you've never had a bruise before, and there's a big mark on your hip. Well, it, I ache, definitely it hurts really bad. But, uh, I kept going through it, thought I'd let it pass and just, you know, tough it out. But it's not, you know, I gotta take some time off. Honestly, I think he just got a little bit burnt out and decided he wanted a few days off. Yeah, you, if you don't pull your weight, you're not gonna relax. The wolf pack is pushing CJ out. Just about to get the plane departed. The next morning, CJ is back at work prepping the sked, but no one seems to want him there. Hey, don't pull that tent yet! The tent's last, man. You're gonna freeze up the fing engine again. We gotta get these cords out of here. Like, the tent's the last thing you pull. Otherwise, you're sitting there and you're putting everything away and your engine freezes up. Put it back over the fing engine. Why do I hand folded all this stuff? They didn't help me, huh? They didn't help me. Okay, well, you know what? You don't need our help. I can do this. You just go and start your freight. There you go, Tanner. You're... Tanner. Whatever. Getting careless. CJ is not as motivated as the rest of us. You can. There's a definite disconnect between him and pretty much everybody else that works here. Oh, there's so much to do. <laughs> <laughs> you should check out his hair, though. Take your tube off. He spent, he spent so much time on it this morning with gel so and everything. Time. <laughs> 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 it's probably uh, sarcasm and uh, inappropriate humor sarcasm. It's the only thing that keeps us going, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Rampies, they always show up so green and eager and so full of life. And then a couple months with us, then... <laughs> Back in Yellowknife, it looks like yesterday's bad weather was just a taste of much worse to come. Uh, there's a winter storm coming. Uh, that's a huge amount of uh, warm air coming in. Tomorrow they're forecasting maybe freezing rain, freezing drizzle, flurries, and basically all the anti-flying weather you could possibly think of. Ice storms and airplanes are a bad mix. And what will potentially happen is all the ice disrupts the airflow over top of the airfoil, and uh, it's all turbulent, and the wind can no longer generate lift, and you essentially just fall out of the sky. But as you can see, the wind's picking up, so 
It's going to be a whole lot of hell for these guys in the morning. Is that dress people cover? I think so. Hey, you're going to give it a high time to door. Storm or no storm, Buffalo Joe wants his sked to always leave on time. Catch your water. Looking for VFR departure off Alpha. 168 ground, VFR departure clear. It's Edmonton, 10 minutes after departure. By the time they are on approach in Hay River, the first wave of the ice storm has arrived. Before they call it a night, the engines on the DC-3 need to be put to bed with heaters and blankets to keep the oil from freezing. Okay, let's get these electrical cords on the floor. Nothing CJ saw on TV prepared him for a night like this. I'm getting used to it, but it's pretty bad. I mean, you know, high winds and uh, freezing rain coming down. Now they need to mop the wings with glycol before putting on the wing tents. The glycol works as a layer in between the wing and the wing tent, so it doesn't freeze onto the wing. But first, they need to heat the glycol. But the heater in the shed is broken. Right now, we got this thing in there, heating it up. So far, it's still a little chilly. So we're probably going to be here a little while, because that's a small bucket for our big plane. <laughs> After the glycol, the cloth wing tents go on. Oh, yes. Try to keep them from blowing off or ripping to shreds. Holy Too windy for the wing tents. We're probably going to have ripped wing tents in the morning. Sort of over 10 knots, they all start to rip at the seams. They're not strong at all, actually. They're probably rated for 10 knots, 17 knots right now. I like all the back here. We're good. They finally get the covers in place. But the storm is still building, and the ice has yet to hit. There's no telling what they'll find in the morning. All night long, a gale force wind has blasted Hay River with super cooled rain that instantly turns to ice. When we arrived in the morning, I kind of looked at Phil and he looked at me and it was like, yep, this is gonna be bad. Sometimes. 
Ice or no ice, the sked still has to leave on time. I think the door's frozen. And the handle broken. I've never seen conditions like this before. We're here early, but I don't think we're here early enough. There's a thick skin of ice on every surface of the plane. What the f is this? The only way to get it off the prop is with a frost fighter. But the frost fighter is in the shed, and the shed door is frozen shut. CJ mans the van to tow the heater Back up. Back up. and proceeds to jackknife the frost fighter. Yeah, that was a pretty stupid move. I mean, there's a giant fool bank right there. The frost fighter is in place, and they start to take off the wing tents. Luckily, we got the wing tents on with some black ball under it. They should come off, right? this the water went right through the wing tent the water got under the tent and froze it to the wing this is gonna suck though is it i thought it already sucked this isn't dangerous at all Pat. see if you can get it unstuck from the leading edge jeff it really doesn't want to come off the wing right now they have to be careful not to damage the wing's moving parts. Don't do that to the elevator, okay? Last thing we want, broken elevator. The captain arrives, still fully expecting this flight to have an on-time departure. How did it survive? That's not nice. You gotta get these off. Hey, David, yeah. it's gonna take four of us to get the... Uh... Hamilton? Hey. Yeah. yeah. The tent on the right side tail wing is refusing to come off. Okay, come here. Bring the ladder. Get up here on your knees and walk along. And put your hand underneath that and pull it up. Yay! Woo! 15 minutes before scheduled takeoff, the wings still need to be de-iced. Well, it is a perfect storm. We get one perfect storm a year, and tonight we got her. The crew has been phenomenal. And these eastern boys used to ice storms. But us northern boys, we just used to snow. At 7.40 a.m., a mere 10 minutes behind schedule, Buffalo Joe fires up its vintage DC-3 and takes off into the storm. Approach Alpha. Buffalo 168, clear takeoff runway 16 for Alpha. Pressure's up here, you uh, Pressure's up, plate's green, gears locked, steel wheels locked, brakes are off. Despite a 
brutal ice storm in Hay River. Joe lands the sked in Yellowknife only a few minutes behind schedule. All right, Bob's coming up. Bob's coming up. That's a lot of ice, look at that. The ground crew is impressed that he made it at all. The icicles hanging off the side of the plane. That's crazy, man. Wait a bit. I thought we did pretty good before we uh, got dealt there. Probably gave him a lot of work this morning. Thank goodness I'm yelling at <laughs> While some storms pass, others just keep building. That night at the Rampy House, co-pilot Phil unloads on CJ. Yeah, so CJ, I don't think you need to come in tomorrow morning. I think we're, uh, we're pretty good. For the morning? No, I mean, for the rest of the day, and probably for the rest of the week. I haven't enjoyed your attitude around, you know? I don't like it when you roll your eyes or you, you talk back to me. You know? What, what, what do you mean? You've never noticed yourself rolling your eyes or talking back or anything? No. I just noticed you yelling at me all the time, actually. And I deal with it. I don't know. And I don't think I yell. I don't raise my voice. I mean, we, we just don't need you anymore. It's too bad. But CJ's having none of it. The next morning, he shows up for work anyway. A little choke CJ's here. But as long as I don't see him, I'm gonna be pretty happy. CJ got in an altercation with the pilots last night, so he's not allowed to touch the planes anymore. I had enough of his attitude, so I just didn't want him around. I guess apparently he's a courier driver now. But I, I wasn't expecting him to come back, so I don't know. Phil was being a piece of shit, that he can be and trying to boss me around and tell me he's my boss, and he's not. And I'm just gonna ignore anything, uh, you know, Phil wants me to leave is what he wants me to do. He's a piece of shit. And he wants me to leave early. Try and kick me out and make me break. So, I'm not gonna listen to him. CJ turns to rampy manager Kathy McBrien. It just gets in my head. Do you feel like they're bullying you? They are. It's not you, it's, it's not you, it's them. I've never heard that breakup line before. I've heard a few, but not that one. Oh, CJ's just need us to get some stuff off his chest. He's not getting along with the rest of the crew. He doesn't think they respect him or treat him well. But if I go tell them to, you're you're upsetting them and stuff like that, does it, do they make it worse? Like, you know, you, you made your mommy come talk to me? If he's mad at Phil, well, imagine if he worked with Grandpa Kenny. <laughs> No allies left, CJ has finally had enough. I gave my two weeks because there's no sense in me being here and, you know, I'm working very hard and for what, if, if, if there's nothing in the end? It's, it's a great experience. So I'm proud of myself for sticking it out. Back in Yellowknife, Graham has a bit of good news for his girlfriend Ingrid and her three kids. Oh, it's good to be home. Here it is, moment of truth, guys. Take a look at this one. Ta da! Nice. In all its glory. You don't realize how much you use indoor plumbing until it's gone. Nice. I want a two million from both of these. It's good. It's good to have the house all back together and in one piece and water running and uh, everyone back home and happy. So you try holding it in for three days. It's painful. <laughs>